I like to be consistent in the way we did it last night and the way we're going to do it tonight. And so what I'm going to ask is for all of our guests in a moment uh, to come in, and they're going to sit in the order they've presented, and each one is going to do um, a little presentation representing either their entity or what they want to say. And before I do that, I want to say thank you to all of them. It's been another great day. And... Uh, <laughs> And having my friends here is emotional for me. And having so many on one stage with a similar message is very important to me. So let's get on with it. And I'm asking my guests, please, to come. Pragit, you, you can come first. And here they are. Thank you, my lovely friends, for all that you're doing for our planet, for being here, for participating in the way you are, and for the love you have for us, one another, for me, and for them. Pragit. Beloved ones, we greet thee again. And again, we invite you to simply relax and again, we suggest you close your eyes and just tune in to the energies that you have called in this day and feel this 12th dimensional field is still here if you wish to connect to it. So feel and ask for more. Just ask to feel it deeper. There are a few things that we said to you a little earlier. The first, we wish to remind you once more this simple phrase, thank you, bring me more. It can change your life. Thank you, the gratitude for what is. And bring me more, because existence is abundant. Existence wants you to be abundant. How much can you allow? What is this abundance? So many people still connect abundance to this money. No. Abundance is having what you need when you need it with a little bit extra to share. And when we say what you need, we are not talking about bread and water. If you want to go in vacation in Hawaii, you need it. If you want to drive a beautiful car instead of a wreck, claim it. Allow yourself to live the way that you deserve. Existence wants you to be abundant. Thank you. Bring me more. Something else that we would simply like to say. You are all creators. You carry the spark of the creator within you. You create everything that you experience in your life. So start creating more consciously. Love yourself. And again, we said a little earlier, allow your vibration to move to its natural, beautiful frequency by stop holding it back. Stop judging yourself. Stop judging others. Stop judging situations. Your judgment tends to lower your frequency. In particular, stop judging yourself. 
You are beautiful. You are radiant beings. When you stop judging yourself, you start to feel that radiance. You have heard from all of us, and you know it yourself. There is a oneness. There is a oneness that you can feel, that you can tune into in this illusion of separation. We love you and we bless you. There is so much joy and excitement around the universe for what is occurring here. Do you know that? Do you know that you are being watched right now? Do you know that multidimensional beings are here with you right now? It is the case. And as you allow self to open up to the grandeur that you are, you will begin to feel and then experience these multidimensional beings in your life. For you too are multidimensional, temporarily experiencing this beautiful, wonderful Gaia, as we like to call her, the Earth or Gaia. You are on the leading edge of creation. You here gathered are on the leading edge of awakening of humanity. You have been acknowledged for this these days. You have been invited to go and share your light, to share your beauty, your radiance. It is a joy for us to observe and to laugh with you and to feel the tears of joy with you. It touched us deeply when our beautiful spokesperson, Julianne, brought a little stargate to give to this one, Ilan, and we could feel so many of you saying, oh, ooh, I would like that. <laughs> and so, in your tomorrow, we will bring another one and give it to Ilan. Who will be the grand creator who receives that? Hmm. One thing that we have said in the past and we would like to say it now, it is about loving yourself and knowing yourself. We have made this suggestion to many. Love your body, this physicality. And we make a suggestion. Love the body as if it is your closest friend, your lover. When you take a shower, slow down. Embrace the body. I love you. I love you. I love you. it will start to give you an experience of yourself in a different way. It will start to help you to connect to the innate intelligence. When we first suggested to Pragit that he does this, he felt a little strange in the shower saying, I love you. He whispered it at first. <laughs> but after a while, it took him a while because he wasn't totally being that love. But then suddenly one day when he was saying, I love you, caressing, acknowledging, loving the body, he felt the body respond. It was almost, he describes it as an inner hug. The body responded. He suddenly felt like a Love your body, love yourself, drop 
your judgment and celebrate life. Beloved ones, we love thee and we bless thee. We honor thee. And we'll talk to you again very soon. Yeshua and El Moria have asked to join in an equalness, sitting here in a togetherness in order to convey a slightly different perspective in loving yourself. A word that I believe Adamas spoke of yesterday was selfish. It's a word that in this third dimensional reality that we play is not a very nice word, but there's two ends to that stick, selfishness. Most see it as stepping on someone, using someone, taking advantage of someone to progress their own well-being. Not many like that, except those that are so much in fear and pain that exercise that end of the stick. Yeshua and Metatron, Yeshua and El Moria, wish to speak of the other end of the stick, the one that says, have for yourself. See, so many of you are healers, and you give, and you give, and you give. So many of you have grown up in the religions that say it is better to give than to receive. But if you keep giving and giving and giving and giving and giving, there's nothing left to give. But we've grown up in that third dimensional reality, having no power and giving. As this shift of consciousness unfolds, you are being requested to be selfish to simply begin to have for yourself. Continue to give, but have that which nurtures you. Allow it to be abundant as it flows to you and give freely of the excess. In that third dimensional game that we have played in being controlled and weaker and less, giving for many was the way of finding that space in the heart. But in this shift, it's about having for yourself. The shift allows you, instead of looking externally for your well-being, for your validation, for your acceptance, it's in the space where you become selfish, in the heart, in the sacred heart. It's in the sacred heart that you begin to recognize in present time that I can observe the world. I don't have to move to it in order to fit in with it. It's a space where you begin to recognize happy, present, capable, certain. It's very soft. It comes with ease. But as you recognize it, a very significant shift happens. In your well-being, everything comes to you. You need not go externally looking for filling the lack. The lack is in the external movement. But as you sit in the sacred heart that's opening, as you begin to experience the personal power of being selfish, you begin to find that you have for yourself. But more so, in that space, you begin to recognize what power is. Power has no sword. Power has no force. There's no push. There's no external exertion. There's a presence you in the love and the power, one with the Creator. Everything comes to you. 
It's a place where you have to choose to know yourself. It's not difficult, but it is not necessarily easy because my well-being, my belief system, my thoughts, my habits take me out there for what is really in here. So we ask you to begin to know your power and it's in that power that you begin to know the love that you are. We love you greatly. This is an adventure. Enjoy what you are about to experience. Blessings. A wee story, and this bit big. An old friend of mine by the name of Raven. He was telling for a story from his grandfather's 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 grandfather. That's a long ways back, you know. But understand this: he was telling the story of himself, because what is remembered is that he was that little self. And the grandfather was telling him how to cross the stream, so to speak. So he walked out into the middle of the stream and he told the young raven, he said, now when you come out here, be careful. You know, the raven, he just ready. He wanted, he showed his great, great grandpappy. He stepped right into the stream and sploosh right on his butt. There he said, they're looking, whipping the water out of his face. He stood up quickly, and he wanted to get to his grandfather, who had moved further out into the stream. No problem, he thought, I'll just run quickly out there, and on his face this time. And the grandfather to spoke to him, and he said, remember this, lad. When you're gonna take a step on this dimension that you call Earth, you gotta be important Every foot has got to have a foot before you set it down. And what he did was, he stood up and he put his foot out and he felt this little stone, a little slippery though, but he wiggled his toes a little bit. And he settled that stone and he stepped up with another, another foot and put in another foot stone. And again, it was slippery, but not so slippy he was going to fall down. So I tell you this thing, lads and lasses. Remember, this is just a very simple metaphor. Metaphor is, know where you're going to put your feet down before you set them up there to get put down. Because if you don't, you might find the going a little bit rough. But as you learn through age and, and unification, of all the love these people are sharing with you right now tonight. Understand this much. You're all walkers of this life. And you don't have to fall down so much. Good evening. I am the wisdom of the feminine divine in honor of the wisdom of the masculine divine. We wish to continue to speak of love, of self, and deep nurturing. It is the time of the nurturer. We ask you to nurture yourselves first and then nurture others. And the deeper you go in the strength and expression of the infinite love, you will find a beautiful exchange, an infinity symbol, where you love others, you love yourself. You love others, you love yourself. And before you know it, you don't know where one ends 
and the other begins. It begins with you nurturing yourself in the energy of wholeness, in the energy of holiness. A deep breath for nurturing, please. In this time, we also encourage you to live with what is so that you may more clearly see what can be. And a key for that is the less you judge, the more you will see. So in deep love for self, in that constant exchange and acceptance, learning the energetic recalibration of response versus reaction, response and nurturing, living with what is so that you may more clearly see what can be. The life continues to unfold. To realize that you are co-creators with one another and the kindness that you share with one another is also within your own being. Nurturing again and again. We wish to remind you again that you are all channels, learning to channel more of who you are. We are entering a time where the resonance is becoming stronger. And each one of us made an agreement that when this resonance of empowerment arrived, we want it to be refined, recalibrated, centered, deeply loving of self and others. It will continue, you know. It's an ever-spiraling upwards. What will you share with one another now to nurture? You know how much we love to interact with you. What will you share to nurture? Speak up. How do you nurture one another? Let us hear you through wisdom, laughter, kindness, compassion, honoring a little more. Feel the resonance as you nurture. Let the words bring the resonance in. And as we continue to realign, recalibrate, and change the old beliefs, transform, evolve the old beliefs, of course, let that evolve and change the old actions. Are you willing? Without guilt, please, for that is the last thing we wish to bring to the planet. Without guilt. To recalibrate, realign, reaffirm. You came here in the energy of unconditional, infinite love. And it is that resonance that we share in this moment. Hold it in your hearts. Share it with your loved ones. Continue to inspire. Continue to demonstrate unconditional, infinite love. Let it pass through you first and then remind others they too are channels for unconditional, infinite love. Do you agree? Continue the merging of all that you are. Continue to grow in your ability to channel more of who you are. And may all of it be in the resonance 
of infinite love, for you are infinite beings. The more you know that, the easier the infinite love flows through. Are you ready? Then let us continue honoring you. I am the wisdom of the feminine divine in honor of the wisdom of the masculine divine. And so are you. Blessings of union. Greetings from home. What is home? We call home with a capital H. And yet, it is so difficult to remember that process. But we tell you, dear ones, you have been here from the beginning. From the very beginning of Earth, even when it was hot and gaseous, you came here as spirits. You were in light body then before the density. And at one point, one of you was sitting in, the, sitting in the beautiful area saying, do you want to play a new game? We're gonna play a game where we put a veil over our heads and we can't remember who we are. And we're gonna bump into each other and we're gonna probably hurt each other once in a while, but we're gonna love each other and find what we're doing here. And you all agreed and you stepped forward into this new game. And you have evolved it so many times. It is so beautiful for us to watch. For you have laid crystals on your path. Now, from our perspective, it is beautiful because you come to earth, you put the veil on, and you try to find the path the path that you have set for yourself. And every so often, you see one of these beautiful crystals that you have set to mark your way. And many times, dear ones, you have given your power to the crystal. You have worshiped the crystal. You have said, you are the honor. We are the small beings. And the crystal is trying so hard to reflect your light. But sometimes you haven't been able to see it. Part of that is the game itself and the way you devised it. All of that is changing. So rapidly now, the veil is not only becoming transparent, it is disappearing altogether. You are starting to see who you truly are. Won't be easy, dear ones. You have BS belief systems. <laughs> Opening that up will be the biggest part for all of you. To dare to rethink. For what you see in the crystal is not the light from home, it is your reflection. Every religion on planet Earth is meant to reflect your power. Every book to help you remember who you are. Is it possible to remember every part of it? No. That is what the veil has been helping you with. But now that it's starting to become totally transparent, you can see. Trust it. Step into it. Dare to place yourself first in the line of energy. It is your rightful place. As was previously spoken, there is a major difference between being selfish and being self-first. For being self-first is your rightful place. When you see the crystals on the path, when you see your reflection of light in many of these beautiful ways, Take it, own it. Know that you are once again evolving this incredible game. You came in light body originally to birth the earth. And all the different levels that she has gone through, that you have walked her through, 
And now, after having all this energy in density, you are stepping back into light body right now. Do you remember who you are? We do. And we will hold that light for you until you can hold it yourselves. It is our honor. Aspavo. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I open the gathering with my energy. I close it with my energy. But my energy is shared with the others. I want to review. Sitting to my partner's left are teachers. They have different methods of informing you of so many different things. I want to get to the practical. I want to reduce all of this to something that you will leave with and remember. All of the teachers are telling you you are enabled past what you used to be. Each of the teachers in their own way are giving you information that there is a paradigm shift on the planet. It invites you to take a power that you didn't have before. Each one in their own way is giving you precious information on how to proceed in this, the new energy. Each one. There is a confluence of energy, of sameness, of message that says you are magnificent and different than you were. Practical. What do you do with it? And do you even believe it? Dear ones, there are always those who would say it is a good message. I always feel good when I hear these things from these, the teachers of this age. And yet, some of you will say, and yet, I don't know what to do next. And there are some listening to this right now who don't believe it. They say it is flowery. It is good. The intention is there. And they say there is no substance for there is no way I can believe this. Look at the world, they say. And what is going on? As they tune in to their media anywhere on the planet, they will see the strife right now that is different. Frightening it is. And they will say, this does not reflect what the teachers have said this day. There is no light, they will say. There is no comfort or joy or celebration or hope, they will say. I'm going to tell you again what I said. If you buy into that, my dear friend, you are taking on exactly what the enemy of darkness would have you do. They want to rip away the belief that there will be hope, that there is hope, that there is light. Practical. Let me show you something special. This is the first time on this planet that you have a war that is not country against country. It is blatantly dark against light. 
it was predicted that in this time the darkness would raise its head and try its best in the ugliest way to convince you you are still a slave to the old energy to give up to fear to hate just like you always have predictable it's there and it is different for you to look at imagine imagine an army of darkness that is so powerful and well-funded they don't even need borders they can go where they want and do what they wish imagine this is different i'll tell you something there is a paradigm shift coming in order for you to beat this. We mentioned some time ago what it would be. We said it's simple. How much money does it take to fund what you see going on right now that is dark and ugly and awful, unexplainable and scary? How much money do you think? And the answer is a great deal. It has to be funded on a daily basis with the kinds of funds you have no idea big we told you to cut the funding if they don't have the funds they will then not exist we said that and there are those even within your own government who heard that my partner knows this for they have spoken to him and they said that's not good enough give us another way and now I'll tell you why it's something that they know it's something that you know because dear human beings in this country it is your friends who are funding them you must change the paradigm of integrity of who you let do what for friendship or non-friendship or political reasons how many heads have to be cut off before you see it clearly practical things are changing now if you don't believe it i want you to look at the children i want you to look at this and understand You have an entire race of new children on this planet and you're having trouble with them because they don't believe they were born dirty they know things that you didn't they don't comply because they're wiser than you were they're self-assured because they come in knowing and they know they are magnificent so doubter i want you to take a look at what is in front of you that is happening on this planet right now and realize all of it was predicted and it's happening exactly as we said that should say something about the practical what are you gonna do with these kids <laughs> BS belief systems are going to have a very difficult time with the roles in their churches with children who will not buy in to being victims and born dirty Do you see what I'm saying there is a paradigm shift ahead it's already happening humanity is changing the consciousness that is coming in is changing and every teacher on this platform has their own way of saying get ready for it here are the things that you can do don't despair practical what are you going to do when you go home how are you going to digest all of this information from all of them and i will tell you this dear ones you don't have to digest the minutia i want you to know this do not despair all of them have one message you are magnificent 
and you're going to win. Light is active. Dark is not. If you turn on the light, the darkness cannot exist. We've said it for 25 years. Now, more than any time, we say you need to believe it. That's practical. I want you to go home comforted in your heart that all is in your hands, dear ones, in a way that is beautiful and benevolent and very doable. That's the message they have, everyone, every single one. This is why we love you the way we do. Leave differently than you came. Practical. And so it is.